Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning, my wonderful friends. This is this is a, another stunning day. Stunning, stunning day. That's all I can say. Now, this is Cornell University, and this is, they're talking about the wobbling of one of the moons of Saturn, and why is it wobbling? They think something is beneath the surface. Now, this is Mimas, and Saturn has what they call a zoo, <laughs> and they are correct, of moons. Now, this is the prominent feature that we're going to be discussing, and all these little craters, those aren't little impact craters, in my opinion, and I will discuss and show you why I can make that statement and, and, and back it up very solidly. Now, this goes back quite a few years ago, um, well, you know, 2014, and I was in contact with Cornell right in that time frame, a little earlier. I want to say something about Cornell right now, because I have been very, very, very very critical of academia, and rightfully so, because they are a dismissive, denialist, elitist, you know, a dismissive community that just will not allow any discussion of anything that they don't want to talk about. So they have their peer review set up to crush any dissent, and they force you to repeat what they tell you to say, or they won't give you the paper, they keep your money, they ruin your life. Now, Cornell, I felt a whole different feel from them. I did talk to the people in, uh, I believe it was chemistry, somewhere physics, whatever it was. I can't remember exactly what the conversation was, but they did, they actually were interested. They, they commented and they talked, and it may have even been after this, because at this time I was watching the, um, you know, as a matter of fact, I remember what this was now. At this time... I was looking at um, Comet 67P, and I think I contacted him about that. Um, well, I'll look into that later. Um, but it was right about this time I had talked to them, and, and then they're talking about Mimas here. And what is this big thing, and why is it wobbling? And the astronomers up there are saying that well, they, they think there might be something inside of it sloshing around. And that it might have a water inside. And guess what? They may be right. All right, it's coming back to me. I saw Comet 67P when they were up there around the beginning of 2014, let's say. I was really, really interested in this Rosetta mission because I could see that the the thing they were looking at here, Comet 67P, is biological, no question about it. So I think I got a hold of, of um, Cornell about Mimas being this. Let me show you what Mimas is. All right, now these are the stone balls that are on Earth, but right there, you see that? That's the same sort of little spot of the attachment to Mimas. Now, there's a, a stalk that comes in and holds on to these. These are tendon balls. These little spots are all the little tiny holes that are all over Mimas, which we call craters. All right, now there's different types of tendon balls. They do different jobs in different places. There's ones that lock into the bones. You see this? And they hold the bone to the tendon, and that goes into the muscle. They have other ones that are ligaments that go back and forth and hold bones together. I have a bone here, hold on. This is what would be considered a ligament right there, and that holds another bone right onto it, and then they can move and twist and do this and that, but not fall apart. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then there's all these little holes in, in here, and that's what these bumps are. Now, then there's other ones that are on your fleshy area, you know, your guts and stuff. You know, yeah, they're all over the place. I mean, they're everywhere. These balls are literally everywhere. And this is what's now called interstitium. Let me show you that. All right, a couple of little things that's kind of interesting about this. These are those balls. They come tiny, they come gigantic, they come moon size like a Mimas. That's what that ball was. Now, this little strap here is a spring. This is a fluid-filled bag, and this is just slurpy plastic bag stuff. This keeps that bag open. 
And when you pull your skin and so forth and your organs and your mucosal areas and all, everywhere in your body, everything is anchored with these balls. Everywhere. There's thousands and millions of them probably in your body. And when you move, everything comes back to where those balls were anchored. What's happening in COVID, this little pincher here, this spring, is breaking. This collagen, see these collagen, there's this, is this type of collagen which is a real floppy, rubbery, nothing. This is a tough, springy one, CD34 positive lining cells. This is the stuff that's breaking. It's, it's supposed to spring back. It's, 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 something's attacking it. And what happens is the, the mucus that's supposed to be secreted by bacteria that lives in this membrane, this is what's called a membrane-bound bacteria live here. If you kill them with antibiotics or for any reason whatsoever, you're invaded, the springs are broken, COVID kills you. Now you just saw what I just showed you. This right here is interstitial. That's the interstitial. That is the mucosal layer or skin or whatever it is because there's a layer and then there is always that rubbery interstitial layer and then these are the balls that were embedded in that fleshy area that have eroded out because these are the tough guys. These things here anchor. Now, what erodes out of here is the mud. That's where mud comes from is eroded flesh. We are in a new world, my friends. It's time to just open up your eyes and say, okay, I got to really think about this and not just dismiss it and walk away and hide and, you know, pull the covers over your head. <laughs> it's too late for that. You see this? These are the interstitial balls. There was a, they eroded down. Why are they growing moss all over them? I can tell you why, because these are biological. Anything that is biological is a, a, a a grower. It grows plants. I use um, bone meal and blood meal for plants. That's what grows plants. That's what is important is blood. Blood contains all the products in your body to make your body work. And when you die, it more or less stabilizes. When it's in salty waters and so forth, the stabilization is not complete as it is in other where it's broken down. It's a, it's a different process, but it ends up being food. This is literally food for these plants to, to live on, obviously. Okay, my friends, this is Tyson Carlson. He's my good friend. We've been working together for a few years now. And um, here he is, just a guy living basically in the woods. He's, he's, a, he's a, a woods guy. And he he's, lives off the earth. He raises goats. He's a, he's a farmer. And he wants truth, just like I do. I'm, I'm no big shot either. So I'm just trying to find truth. I know I sound like I'm bragging all the time. I'm not bragging. I just want to find out the truth. And I have to be a little confrontational because this is very, very, very difficult for people to even allow themselves to examine because they say you'd have to be crazy even to think about that. You're just a crazy person. Just don't, just let them alone. And they walk away and they close their eyes. These are these balls. These are these straps. Exactly what I'm showing. This is his shadow. These things are the size of basketballs or bigger. And these are not even big. You want to see some big balls? I'll show you some big balls. Okay, I've been claiming everything is biology and that is biology too and they say oh roger come on that's just erosion that's all mud and stuff well yes it is that's true however this right there was the same kind of attachment just like this broken off here that mimus is only mimus still has its its round part it has all the little bumps and so this was in a layer of tissue if i could show you this maybe you would believe me this is one strap has not eroded yet that one's broken and it would have come down to this ball right down here you see they're all over the place they were everywhere and they all eroded yes they did and why did they erode there must have been some giant amount of water here that original originally was there and ended up taking away the fleshy, muddy components that I talked about before that make mud. Let's see if I can show you this in an anatomical setting. 
Okay, here's a little, a little bit of a shocker for you. These are the fibrils that we talked about before. They come down to the ball that I've been showing you right along. That is the ball. It's a little pixelated. Now, that ball normally would have sat in this container here that holds it, and it ripped out. That's an injury. That's not supposed to be there. That's a painful injury. Now, what else do we see here? Anything else? Yeah, I see a lot of stuff. I see walls in Peru. They break the bumps right off here, and they use these flat slabs to make these walls in Peru, and they left the little bumps. And you can see right inside of the little bump is still the organic part of the tissue that would run through the sheath. The sheath is on the outside, the organic part is on the inside. And they're all over South America. They had machines here cutting these things. We've missed everything and ignored it and dismissed it because it can't, it, it was not missed, it's been dismissed. And it's time to stop this. Where do I think these things came from? These are tire tracks in in literally in tendon, and I intend to show you this, I'm telling you these things are gigantic. This is in Fuerte de San Piata, Bolivia. This red is blood. This is a tendon. This was some kind of a vehicle designed specifically to cut slabs. It was designed to drive on dry roads, so it had tires, but it also had these tank treads so that when it sunk down in, it could still drive over the wet flesh. They, it's, it's specifically designed to do this job. Now that's a tendon. And they were cutting these slabs and they took them back here and put them up in the walls. When, all they had to do was they're still wet when they cut them. And they put them up and they just plopped them in and they all just, you can't put a piece of paper between them because they were just like putty when they put them up. Now right, you see these, these are the little bumps I'm talking about. They're everywhere. And some of them, I have one that I show you. I think they had a wall that they used to try to figure out how to work, work with these things. I'm not kidding you. Let me see if I can find them. All right, see this? I think that's what they were doing here. Why would they do this? There's no, I said to myself, what, what the hell are they doing? These are those bumps. You see that right there? Hold on. I think I got to expand it as much as I can get it, but let me home in on that. And you can see the actual biology that's in the center of the strap. This is one of those straps, and that ran over to a ball that would have been, you know, they, obviously they cut them off here. Now, so why did they do this? <laughs> why the hell would somebody do this? They left, this is like the surface of these tendons, so they, they can give out and come back just a little bit. This is really part of the biology, and they left it on this one. They seem to have scraped off a little bit of on this one. They seem to have somehow cleaned these other ones in different manners to see how they were going to use them. And apparently they decided at the end to just snap them off here and slam them up in place. <laughs> I, I don't know what to think. This is just this is as exciting as hell to do this every day. It really is. It's just amazing. It's just like being walking into a whole new universe literally is. All right, so you understand my statements that they cut these slabs off of these tendons. Well, in some cases they did a pretty poor job, literally. The the tendon material is what they call CaCO3. This is, um, hold on, I got something. This is what happens to tendon in certain conditions, but you could see the fibers inside there. This is, you're always going to have this the blood the blood just doesn't go away the blood is always going to be there. but you could see the abrupt transition here i hope you can you should be able to that's the way tendons work they have a stripes and straps in them and they are the best for the walls however bones have to run through them too like i have another one here you see this this is tendon but there's bones running through them too. Obviously, you have bones inside. You have the tendons that wrap it. They run up to the muscles, and then you walk around and stuff. Well, this one, they got the bone along with the tendon. You see, this is a blow up of that. They got that bloody bony part, which really normally they don't do. This wall here is all made a lot of scraps. Really, look at that one up there. Yikes. Um, they. Uh, Oops, you couldn't see that, could you? That's the one I was just talking about. See, this is, 
you'd have a, a tendon really is like would be out here and the bone would be in here and the bone they used it normally they don't use the bone I don't know why they did it and they made this just maybe this was like for people to figure out how they work I don't know I and I don't know why they made these one wall right after the other these crazy situations now was it defensive was it like tiered for planting was it preparing for floods I don't know I have no idea I, I'm, I'm really just trying to understand that's all I'm doing is trying to understand and I would love to have people that have a lot more knowledge about these things than I do there's people that, are, that that have studied these things for a very long time and they know a lot I'm not, I'm not saying they don't understand they just don't understand because they don't understand <laughs> And what don't they understand? They don't understand everything's biology. They think that ah, they're just really. I don't know what they think at this point. They it's kind of hard to miss. And after all of the years that I've been pushing this, it's been ten years now. And for the six or seven years, I've been really, really pushing it into academia everywhere, Yale, Harvard, every single top university, and they absolutely refuse to engage in material evidence very distressing and they're charging a hell of a lot of money to teach people stuff that they it, I have to believe they know they're not teaching honestly anymore they can, it, it, it's impossible to believe that the this can be dismissed for this long after being laid on a table in front of them and I did and I'm this table's been laid out in pfft, about as laid out as you can get a table laid out for years and years and years and years so Unless you step up and start saying something, I think you're just going to have to swallow whatever they want to feed you. And the feeding, I'm not eating it. Now, I hope this doesn't explode any of your neurons, but this is literally what Mimas is. And I have found nothing in anywhere in our region that is not biological. Every single asteroid, comet, Everything, 100%. I have a uh, media right here, which is saturated with blood. I'll show it to you in a minute. This is the attachment stalk that broke off and left that little crater-looking thing. And there's, there's very stalky-looking things. And there's usually a couple of them. Mimas, sometimes there's only one. It depends on what type of attendant antithesis it was. These, these are balls that anchor into the body. And let me show you what the actual ana anatomical regions that these things are in. Now, and this, uh, this is a full ball. That's, they just cut that off. And these are all those little crater-looking things. Now, Let's take a look at what they do in the body.